Hey, Bob here again with J80 Squared. Thanks for tuning in. This is another video in a series of videos that I'm shooting to show you how to install the XR6 or XR12. The 12 just being a much larger machine than this one, but it's the exact same procedure. Now, in a previous video, I showed you how to install the frame, how to get everything straight, level, and then I locked it down. Now, at the end of that video, I said I was going to make some minor adjustments, some checks and all, before I actually anchored down the, the machine. Now, what I did, I took a string, like kite string, and I ran it from one end of the machine to the other, and then using a ruler, I just made sure that we didn't have any twist. Everything was straight. I got this thing eyeball perfect. So anyway, after I did that, I then made sure that as I mentioned, these legs kind of unloaded off the ground, which is what we wanted. So I snugged them up a little bit as I explained how to do in the first video. And then I used my, vice, uh, my level right here and I basically checked to make sure that everything looked good and it does um it's easy to do you just got to be you know take your time you know make sure everything's right you do not have to have it perfect um i mean imagine a 24 foot long machine what is what does this thing got travel wise to, you know what is that 200 inches 240 inches 260 inches if you're off 20 thou you know on this end half a millimeter you're not going to see it in your cuts I, you know because remember the carriage is also going to be moving over as it comes down so you don't have to have it perfect but you want to get it as close as humanly possible because why not right make your life easier all right anyway in this particular video we're going to go ahead and install the gear racks and the rods the round rods right here each machine comes with six three quarter inch round rods, two of them are gonna be short, two of them are gonna be long. Same thing with the, the gear racks. You notice how heavy and big these gear racks are. Here at JD Squared, we build stuff to last. We don't, we don't, wanna, we don't wanna nickel and dime you in support over the years because we built the machine light duty. So everything's heavy. But anyway, we're gonna install the gear racks under the rails and then we will be installing the round rods right there. So, I think without further ado, let me reposition the camera so I could show you the idea of what we're trying to accomplish, how we're gonna mate these gear racks together, and then we'll get on with it. This is gonna be a short one. This is, a, this is an easy job. Your XR machine is gonna be supplied with two bump stop limit switch triggers. And they look like, let me see if I get a little bit closer for you. They look like that right there. Give, give the camera a chance to focus. Now. The way these things work is they have a little section of gear rack with a keeper hole in the back that will fit onto the bolt and they're very simple to install. They basically place on top of the rail and then you can move them anywhere you want and then using this bolt on the bottom, you lock it into place. Well, we're gonna go ahead and use one of those sections. There's two of them supplied with the machine, but we're gonna use one of them and it's a basically it's a short length of um, spur gear. So we're going to use it to mesh into the existing gear rack. Now I've got a picture showing you what the idea is. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be placing this gear rack here up underneath the rail. Now in the rail, I'll also take a picture of that for you. There is pretty long slots so you could shift this thing um, fore and aft in order to match the other one up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this section to mesh it, but I'm going to go ahead first and run the bolts up and go ahead and install this gear rack and I'm going to bump it against the existing gear rack in the machine. The, um, as I mentioned, the, ra the rails and the gear rack are pre-installed on the main section of the machine, so we're going to be just installing the last four. Let me go ahead and bolt this into position. Oh, by the way, um, I'm using the little button head bolts to do it. They're six millimeter button heads. We use these because we definitely need the head of the bolt to be below the surface of where the rods run. So if you ever, for I have no idea why, if forever you need to replace these, it's button head bolts, nothing tall. All right, let me go ahead and get that into position. Now that we have all of our gear racks installed, we can go ahead and adjust for the gear mesh like I was showing you earlier. 
The idea being, of course, is to use that short segment to use it to help us align the gears up. Now, there's a lot of travel. You can move the either rack pretty, pretty good distance. There's a pretty long slot in there. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to pull the rack towards each other, and then we're going to place the little gear segment right on them, and then using a pair of vice grips, I am going to pull it down. And I'll post a picture of it so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. Just like that. And that is it. We've just adjusted the mesh. We don't have to worry about the alignment this way because we have the dowel pins that we're going to push back against with the gear rack so that everything stays lined up. At this point, all I need to do now is go ahead and tighten down the button head right there. And that's it. I'll run on down, I'll tighten up all of the button heads. There's quite a few of them. It looks like there's about 13 or 14 of them on this rack alone. Um, and then this rack is installed. Now it's very important that after it is installed, when we remove it, everything's locked down. You do want a little bit of daylight in between these two gear racks right here. You don't want them touching. Um, what we do here at the factory is we mill away the flat parts so that that daylight will be there. If there's no daylight there, that means your mesh may not be 100% correct. Um, I don't know how that occur or can occur, but if it does, basically just hit it with a little grind or whatever. And, um, but like I said, we machine these things here, so you, you shouldn't see that, but you are looking for daylight. Anyway, that's it for the, to install the gear racks. Let's go ahead and install the, uh, the round rod for the rollers. Before I put in the rods, let me mention something. When I was tightening the bolts up for the gear racks, um, I made sure that I pushed the gear rack against the dowel pins to keep everything nice and straight. I think I forgot to tell you that. So make sure you do that as you go down the line, tightening up those button head screws. Anyway, to install the round rods, we're gonna start with the short ones. And all you do is simply place them in the groove and bump it up against the next rod. Then I'll go ahead and I'll take the long rod right here and I will bump it up. I will put it in the groove and I will bump it up against the next rod right there like that. Kind of like make sure it feels good. It does. It feels really good actually considering it hasn't been bolted down yet. Um, and then what I'm going to do after I do that, I've got everything pushed together. I'm going to go ahead and take the six millimeter flat head bolts, they're, they're um, 10 millimeters long, and we're going to place them in the rails themselves and screw them down. Now what I'm going to do, and I'll, I'll provide a picture here, I am going to screw them down till they, they are just about flush with the top of the rail. And what the idea is, is they're going to go down and they're going to pinch and lock this rail against the outside edge and hold it down. Now you're going to see the outer edge of the screw right here, you're going to see the outer edge is going to roll up just slightly. When it starts to roll up, you're done. Now, if you ever need to replace a rail for I have no idea why, or if you're going to go to stainless steel or something, then once again, M6 flatheads, 10 millimeters long, they're cheap. Do not reuse them. Once they roll over the edge, they're done. All right, let me go ahead and install one of those right here. In fact, I'll do it now. Let me, um, I'm going to use an impact wrench to get me in the area, just to get me down, but I don't want to use the impact wrench to tighten everything. I'm just letting it go down. All right, now all I have to do is I'm going to take my standard hex wrench and I'm going to start running it down. I'm going to put on my glasses so that I can see a little bit better. I'm going to start running it down, and we need to run it all the way down until it is just either flush with the top rail or just above it. The idea is that the head has to be below the roller. And the roller's got about, I think it's like, I don't know, one and a half millimeters, 60 thou play um, or clearance between the rail. So you're gonna go ahead and roll it down that far. Trying to get it pretty close to even. Um, I can see it rolling up real good. And that is all there is to it. So let me go ahead, I will put in the rest of these um, flat hedge right here and then I'll be back with some closing statements. Okay, we did it. We've got the frame, everything's installed. We've got all of the round rods in the machine, gear racks in the machine. That wasn't a very long process. I, it, 
under an hour easily, you know, uh, if I had to guess maybe 30 minutes if I wasn't shooting a video trying to do all that. But anyway, everything worked good. Let me give you a couple of pointers on situations that you may run into installing the rods right there. And when you what the first one, of course, is when you bump the two rods together like this, there's going to be a slight little air gap there. There, you know, we don't CNC machine flat the ends. There's really no point in it. But anyway, when they come together, there'll be a slight gap. Now, back in the old days, we used to take a metal epoxy, kind of like a JB Weld or something, and we would use a small thin piece of plastic or whatever and actually fill that little gap because I could hear the roller slightly click when it goes over it. You couldn't feel it. You couldn't feel the machine, but you could barely hear it. And I didn't like that. Well, we got a machine back there. I think it's like $300,000, a giant mesher plasma. They don't do that. The, the rails go together. It is what it is. You hear the click because it doesn't affect the cut quality. You could, you could not fill that gap. And when I talk about gap, I'm talking something in the neighborhood of you know, a couple tenths of a millimeter, like six, seven, eight thousandths of an inch. We're not talking much. So um, you can either fill it or not fill it. It will not affect the quality of the cut. And that even goes if you're doing routing. Let's say you're routing a statue or something like that. You're not going to see it. But there is one thing about the rods that you do want to make sure of, and that's the top of the rods are even. So when I put in the, the other four rods, that meant I had six joints that I was making. One of the joints out of the four was misaligned vertically. Um, now, when I talk about misalignment, I think it was like five or six thousandths of an inch. It was virtually almost nothing, but I knew that would definitely make a difference. You'll hear that click over it. So you want the tops as smooth, as even as you can get. Now, what I did is I just took a very, very thin sheet of paper and I just put a little bit underneath it, tightened it down, worked out absolutely perfect. I put a little straight edge on it to make sure the tops of all the rails were perfect. It worked out great. So that's the two hints on the, on the rods right there. Let's go ahead and let me give you an idea of how the gantry operates and why we put the frame in and some of the stuff I was telling you. These machines are designed to, to grow. So whether it be an XR6 or an XR12, we can make these machines 40, 50, 60 feet long, really long. So in the real world, there's no way in God's green earth you're going to have these rails perfect all the way down. And I'm talking separation uh, rod center to rod center. It's not going to happen. If you're off 10 or 15 thou, that doesn't sound like much, but that's pretty much um, what's going to happen. So the way you get around that is the two rear rollers on the machine are mounted on axles and they are securely located. In other words, they don't float. They are rigid. They're locked down. Their job is to make sure that the machine left or right, the gantry can't shift left or right. Now, the two rollers on the front Y carriage right here do float and they'll float back and forth a little over a millimeter, 40, 50 thou thousandths of an inch, something like that. That's why we don't have to have exact perfect alignment of the rollers all the way down. I just wanted to throw that out there to you. A little bit of knowledge never hurts. Anyway, we've got some more um, videos that you're going to have to watch to get your machine running. The, the next two that I know right away are we obviously have to hook the electric up. That's really simple. And then we have to go ahead and hook up the coolant. So watch that video. After those two are done, now the machine is installed. And then I will start doing the videos showing you the complete startup of all the software, how to get the controller going, how to home the machine, do all that. I want to go through every step for you to make sure that when you get this machine, if I fall off the planet of the earth, you're not going to need me because I'm already going to make videos and I'm going to answer every question that I believe you could possibly have. Anyway, we're done with this section of the video. I want to really thank you for watching. I appreciate your support. Hope you have a great day. Goodbye.